Day 46, the warm-up to our practice test. Question number one, what time zone is Chicago in? We have Chicago right there, so we're in the east, uh, central time zone. What is the name of the time zone that contains California? That's the Pacific time zone. Florida is found in the eastern time zone. Way over here. Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona are found in the, they're in this section right here, the mountain time zone. Number five. If it is 3 o'clock in Chicago, what time is it in California? Remember that when you move around from one time zone to another on a map like this, if you are going to the right, you add one hour per step. If you go to the left, you subtract. That's just like on a number line in math class where to the right of the zero mark on a number line, we have the positive numbers, and to the left, you have negative numbers. So for question number five here, if it's three o'clock in Chicago, what time is it in California? Let's put a three here. Three, we go one, two time zones to the left, so we're gonna subtract two hours. Three minus two is gonna be one o'clock. Number five is one o'clock. Number six, if it's 6 a.m. in New York City, what time is it in Chicago? So New York City is over here. If it's six o'clock there and we want to get to Chicago, we're going to go to the left one space, one time zone. So we subtract off one from six and we get the answer of five o'clock. Number seven, if it's 7 p.m. in Texas, what time is it in Chicago? Well, Texas is here. Chicago is here. They're both in the same central time zone, so it's going to be the same time, 7 o'clock. If it's 10 o'clock in Colorado, what time is it in Chicago? Here's Colorado. Chicago is one time zone to the right, so we're going to add one hour. 10 plus 1 is going to be 11. Number 9, if it is 2 a.m. in Chicago, what time is it in Florida? So, once again, Chicago's there, Florida is here. We're going to the right one time zone. So we're going to add one hour to the time. If it's two o'clock in Chicago, add one, you get three o'clock in Florida. Number 10, find the contour interval of the maps below. Here is 700. Here is labeled 800. So there's a difference of 100 steps, or I'm sorry, 100 feet. Uh, between those known dark lines. There are one, two, three, four, five steps to get between those dark lines. So let's divide the 100 feet by five steps and we end up with 20 feet per step. So each one of these intervals represents an additional 20 feet in elevation. The next one, we have 700 there 750 there. That's a difference of 50 feet. And to go those 50 feet, we are shown here one, two, three, four, five steps. So 50 divided by five is 10 feet for every step. This represents a difference of 10 feet, and so does that, and so does that, and so on. Next page. Relief is the difference in altitude, or in other words, a difference in elevation. Altitude and elevation are basically the same thing. The equation for slope is slope equals the relief, or the difference in elevation, divided by the horizontal distance. Number 13, another way of telling which slope is the steepest is to see where the contour lines are the closest. Number 14, on a map, north is always up and west is always left. Number 15, hashers, the dotted contour lines, indicate depressions. 
or another way of saying it, holes. Number 16, latitude lines are like the rungs of a ladder. They are horizontal. In other words, they go left and right. Latitude lines tell us how far north or south a point is. When you climb on the rungs of a ladder, you move up and down. And so you are... Um, sort of like going north and south on a map. Number 18, longitude lines are like the long sides of, uh, long sideboards of a ladder. Long in both words. Okay, the long sides of a ladder, they are vertical. They are going up and down. The long sides of a ladder are vertical, going up and down. The longitude lines indicate how far uh, west an item is, a point is. Label the equator on this map below. And right here is the zero mark, and so this right here is the equator. We'll label that with a big E. Number 21, label the prime meridian. That's the zero mark going up and down. It's the one that goes through England. And it goes through the western part of Africa. We're going to label that PM for Prime Meridian. Number 22, find the location of the smiley face. Here's the smiley face there. We start off at the crisscross of the equator and Prime Meridian. That's the zero, zero mark. And then we go up to the height of the smiley face. And we can see that this line here is the 60 degree mark. So that's 60 degrees north. And then we look at the east-west. This is west of the prime meridian. And all these numbers tell us how far west it is. And we're at the 110 mark. So 60 degrees north, 110 on the west side. Remember, this is the western hemisphere west of England. Okay, next, what's the location of the star? The star is right here. So starting off at the zero, zero mark, we go to the, let's see, go down one step, which is 10 degrees. So 10 degrees down, or another, another way of saying it, 10 south. And then east-west, we are going east three notches. That is 30 degrees. 30 degrees on the east side. So 10 degrees south, 30 degrees east. Remember that this is the eastern hemisphere. All of that is eastern. And while we're at it, the northern hemisphere is the top half, and the southern hemisphere is the lower half. And that should prepare you for the practice test. Good luck.